When you play chess, I suggest you sacrifice four pawns. This is how you create an incredible masterpiece. You are about to witness one of the best chess games I've ever seen. How is this video going to be useful for you? You're going to learn how to sack two pawns straight out the opening. Then you're going to sack another two pawns and a rook to make sure the king is weak. Then finally, you're going to chase the white king all over the board. Knight f3, d5, g3 and g6 with the white pieces, Annie Shigiri, the top player from Holland. And with black, we have one of the most creative players ever, Daniel Dubov from Russia, who has also worked with Magnus Carlsen. So what am I showing right now? d5, g6, this is actually one of the best ways to play against the King's Indian attack. With this setup, you're controlling the light squares, but with g6, you plan to control the dark squares, like this. So if white castles, black actually has this option of getting the center. Now white might play in this fashion, just a totally different setup. The knight can actually go here now, and then white might strike. But this setup is not what Anishigiri wanted. So he went d4, knight f6. C4, C6. The pawns come off, and now knight C3, castle. When you look at this position, you might be thinking, what is William talking about? How is this guy going to sacrifice four pawns? Just watch. Knight E5. So, why is putting a good amount of pressure in the center? Attacking it with the knight and the bishop, the black defends it with knight and queen. Here's the first moment. Can you just sacrifice a pawn? And this move just looks like a total blunder. I'll give you guys five seconds. Can you just find a move where you just lose a pawn? Knight to e4. It's just crazy. Crazy how a top player can play this kind of move. But why? Why is he just sacking a pawn like this? So Anishigiri takes it twice. And here we go again. Can you just play another move where well, you sacrifice yet another pawn? And you can see from the two green arrows, that's a clue. What move can you make? Knight c6. Why is Daniel Dubov going crazy? Why is this guy hating the number of pawns he has? He can do this because the white king is still in the center. That's the key idea. You can sacrifice a lot of material if your opponent's king has not yet castled. Take, take. This central pawn is being attacked. So he defends it. Bishop e3, good move. Another choice is if you're feeling scared, because I would be feeling very, very scared in this position, I would, I'd leave it. I'd castle now. Get out of the way. So I will give this pawn back up. Maybe the bishop or the queen can take. And then it might be level pretty soon. Or black might be down a pawn, but he's just so active. That's what I would do. But Anishigiri has a different idea. He wants to try to hold on to the advantage. He is up one pawn. So he's only down a pawn if the guy took. You attack the rook, move. This is under attack. Now, if you castle, just to get out of the way, this, I'm so glad, by the way, I am so glad this didn't happen. Black's down a pawn, so what? You've got this perfect bishop in the center. As you can see, white's bishop can't move. So black is totally fine in this kind of position. Now, going back a few moves to this moment, bishop e3, bishop h3, that's the key move. It's okay to be down a pawn or two because the guy cannot castle. So now what? Where is Geary going to put the king? f3. If you can't castle, you might as well find a way to sidestep to the left in front of four pawns. Rook b8, hit the pawn, defend by moving, and now rook b4, attacking the pawn from the side. You are attacking it from three angles. Some of you might have been suggesting this, because it looks like the bishop might go after the rook. But this is actually okay for white. You take 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 this is totally fine for white 
this incredible bishop where you're just controlling so many dark squares. On the right, you've got three against one. This is actually pretty good for white. So Dubov didn't go for that. Attacking the center, now king out the way. So even though Dubov attacks the center, he doesn't take it. It's like he wanted Anish Giri to move the king. So then this is the idea. You might be thinking, what is William talking about? There's two pawns in the way. And that's the thing. That brings me on to his next move. F5. He doesn't even take the central pawn. Hit the bishop. Take. White is now up. Two pawns. So this was the first moment in the intro. Sacrificing two pawns. F4. What is this move? Sacrificing a third pawn. Daniel Dubov just doesn't like pawns. If you take with the bishop, check. Pick up the rook. And it's a bit different this time. You might be thinking a couple moves ago he said it was okay to, to do this. No, things are different. The queen now comes in and it's checkmate all of a sudden. No, let's go back a few moves. That's why white took this way. And time for you to give up a fourth pawn. Three seconds. What's the move? Look on the left. The king is really weak. E5. I mean, this move looks absolutely impossible, and the guy plays it. E5. Incredible. If you don't take, black is going to take one of these pawns. Capture happens, so then the queens have a staring contest. No trade. No way. Of course not. You, you are down four pawns. What on earth is happening? Check. King g1, only move. It'd be really nice if a check was possible. And then it'd be mate. No. Rook takes f4. Sacrifice again. Another point from the intro. The guy's down four pawns. I mean, he's got a pawn back, but he's now going to be down a rook. A rook for a bishop, I mean. Now, why has he done this? Because the guy has ten points worth of material, which are out the game. Two rooks are doing nothing. By the way, if it's black's move, that is mate. So white goes check and then offers a queen trade. No trade, no way. Check. So that is possible. Flush the king out, then the bishop might come in. But Dubov goes rook f4 first, hit the queen. Check. Rook back. Now, perhaps this is actually his first bad move. This is possible. Look at the yellow arrow. Please note, this is the vital part. There's no check on the back. Maybe that's why Dubov went all the way back. So then it's the rook guards it as well. But he didn't have to. Rook f5 is actually a really strong move. If the guy runs with the king. Check. Take. So many options for the rook to come in. Looking at the green and the blue arrow. Same vital part. There's no check from the queen. And really cool moment here. If white is trying to cause some havoc, you just take a move out. Take a breather. Play h5. Give your king some space. There's always a chance to bring a few pieces back. The king is just too weak. You might stop it. You might go bishop f5. Something like this. And I mentioned this in the intro and I mentioned it already. Why is 10 points worth of material doing nothing? It's okay to be down a lot because your opponent's rooks are doing nothing. And it'll, it'll be checkmate pretty soon. Something like this, thrown a check, check. Look at all the green arrows, so many squares covered. You've got nine plus five plus three, which is 17 points worth of material against the king. Queen in, there's never any check. You just hide, game over. Blue arrow, looks like we can even pick up the rook. Rook back to f8. Dubov missed it. It's fine. We all miss things. Queen c5, hit the rook. Or actually, probably just to get the bishop back in as a defender. But, too many black pieces around the white king. Check. 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 If you go king f2, check, and the bishop can come out. Giri runs to the right. Check. Check. Bishop went to h3 on move 11. It is now move 30. Really cool backward moves. Bring the king back. 
bring the bishop back i mean to give a check king b5 bishop f8 so really nice couple moves here two bishop retreating moves and they're both winning the king is just surrounded check rook b4 check no bring the queen back last three out of the last four moves have been retreating moves bishop has come back bishop has come back queen now comes back to e7 queen a3 is mate so anish giri plays a3 to stop it but this pawn is now unguarded all of a sudden rook and bishop attack it bishop takes b3 check and then black went on to win so i'm going to show you this very soon but rook b6 is actually possible just trying to create a mating net finally it's move 35 the guy gets the rook in but the queen now comes in and it'll be checkmate if you play a nothing move check and mate by the way black is uh winning here anyway because you're attacking the bishop so if you defend it i mean then check and then mate every square is guarded beautiful situation so going back a few moves dubov didn't see this because he saw a way just to win so much material i mean the guy has sacrificed four pawns a rook for a bishop got the king over to the right bishop takes b3 check finishes it off take 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 pick up the bishop normal geometry normal geometric pattern i mean pick it up next and anish giri resigned the king moves somewhere take two rooks haven't done anything all game it's move 37 really cool journey from the king king e1 all the way here got chased back and after all this well black is going to be up a bishop black is up a bishop and this pawn is going to drop it's just too weak anish giri resigned what a game this was simply one of the best sacrificial games i've ever seen by one of the most creative chess players in the world daniel dubov let me know in the comments what did you think of this incredible sacrificial game have you ever sacrificed four pawns in your own chess games let me know in the comments